Okay, so Sunday morning, I am showered, shaved, and had a great night's sleep. So I'm feeling like a new man. Sometimes when you stay in a hotel, there can be nuisances like the neighbor's TV is too loud, or there's kids running up and down the hallway, or the shower drains too slowly. But I've had none of those problems so far this day. It's been great. Okay, so game plan for today is to go down to Monterey and pretty much spend the whole day at Pebble Beach. Well, I had some breakfast and now I'm back on the road to Monterey again. Uh, I'm getting very familiar with this stretch of highway in Central California, having driven it twice last year and three times this year, uh, this being the third time. Now you might be wondering, Trevor, why don't you stay closer to Monterey? Uh, the answer to that is simple, money. Um, all the hotels in and around Monterey, including Gilroy, Santa Cruz, and everywhere else, jack the prices way up because of the car show. So looking online, even something as basic as a Super 8 motel was going for close to $400 a night, which is just too much money for my budget. So uh, that's why I'm staying 80 miles north in Milpitas is because of the cost of hotel rooms. So driving an hour to an hour and a half um, between the cities is just a compromise that I had to make for this trip. So what's so special about the Pebble Beach Concorde d'Elegance? Like what makes it different from any other car show? This is actually a judged car show. so. All the vehicles that are in it are invited to attend by Pebble Beach staff, and then the vehicles are sorted into different classes. So there's uh, pre-war restoration, post-war restoration, there's preservation classes, there's vintage racing classes, there's all kinds of different categories that you can put your vehicle into. Um, and then every year there's a couple of special categories. Now the special category this year is for American Dream Cars. So these are the wild, rocket-shaped, um, concept cars that were very popular in the 50s and 60s and even into the 70s a little bit. So that should be a real treat to see some of those. A lot of the cars that you'll see at Pebble Beach are among the highest quality that you'll see anywhere. Uh, these are complete uh, restorations that people spend upwards of you know three to eight years restoring um, these vintage cars. Um, and no detail is too small to be overlooked and the judges will also look for that. So there's a panel of about 50 judges or so. Um, they award points to the cars after inspecting them, and uh, you can win best in class, and then of course the top award is best in show. And winning that award easily will add a million dollars to the value of your car um, if you happen to own the winning car. I think last year's winner was a 1936 Lancia. It was a really cool car. Um, so we'll see what's, uh, what happens this year. Made it down to Monterey. I'm on 17 mile drive heading towards Pebble Beach. I made really good time getting here, but now I'm stuck in some pretty slow moving traffic here. I had hoped that maybe getting here a little bit after the start of the show would be better if everyone else got here right at the beginning, but that plan seems to have not worked out. Fifty minutes later, I'm in and I'm looking for a parking space. Well, it took about an hour, but I'm in, I'm parked, and I'm on the shuttle bus heading into the show. order of business I got to get my wristband so I can actually get down to the show field but it's afternoon so let's have a drink free cocktails at the Lexus booth 
I didn't even have to tell him that I own an 18 year old LS400. On my way down to the show field, I spotted this display celebrating 70 years of Ferrari automobiles, so I had to stop and check it out. Now here's a Ferrari that's got my attention. The 365 GTC4 is a 2 plus 2 Grand Tourer, and while it's not as flashy as the F40 or the Enzo or the 288 GTO, it is quite special. Only 500 GTC4s were built during the two-year production run from 1971 to 72, but what's most interesting to me is that Chevrolet completely copied the design of this car when they came out with the Monza hatchback in 1975. And now, without further ado, the 67th annual Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance.
Spent a bunch of time down on the field checking out some of the cars. Uh, a lot of cool stuff down there. Now I'm headed back to the media center real quick to charge my camera and then uh, I'm gonna hit the concept car field. I've got about an hour and 20 minutes left of the show and then it's over. Everything on the field behind me are all concept cars. These are pre-production models showcasing what future production models might look like. just announced the best of show winner as I was walking back from the concept car lawn. Bruce, I think, I think everyone wants to hear just how it feels to win this. I think I'm beyond words. We want to thank our sponsors and to you all for being here and to those of you watching along at home. We look forward to seeing you then for the 60th annual Encore Delegance. That's it, show's over. I have to catch a shuttle bus back to the car. I have to go all the way up to the top of the hill and the last one leaves in 30 minutes. So I had to book it out of there so I can leave. 2017 Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance is over. Loading them up. So remember this morning, this whole thing was full of cars. Now I'm the only idiot left. Right there. So the Pebble Beach show is over, and I figured that while I'm on the peninsula, I might as well try and see the Lone Cypress. It's the most famous thing on the peninsula, one of the signature highlights of the 17 mile drive, and it was only a couple miles away. So here I am. Well, the 
Pebble Beach Concour may be over, but I had a pretty good time. I got to see pretty much everything that I wanted to see. Uh, the media center was really nice. Got a free lunch there. Um, the winning car was pretty cool, this uh, 1929 Mercedes. And on the way out, I stopped to see the Lone Cypress, which was kind of neat. So now I'm heading back up from Monterey to Milpitas again for the last time. So I drove back from Monterey and I'm at the hotel for my final night of my California trip. I fly home tomorrow. It's Sunday night, it's 9 o'clock, and a lot of things are closed, but I need to find some dinner. So I decided I really wanted Mexican food, and there are not any like Filibertos or Julio Berto's or anything like 24-hour Mexican fast food restaurants that I could find. So I ended up going to downtown to a taqueria and uh, getting a burrito to go. I don't know what y'all do when you need Mexican food late at night, jeez. <laughs> 